And now sports with Chris Dewar from the Little Jess Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram Sports Desk. It was a playoff victory drought a dozen years in the making, but that page has officially been turned today by Quincy High Softball down at the Belleville East Regional. What a day for the Blue Devils and Carly Gilker in the circle, getting plenty of help defensively early in this one. Thanks to Caden Smith. She's going to catch the line drive and then double the runner off at first for the double play that's the kind of start you want in the top of the first inning and the offense for the Blue Devils would take over from there Ari or Adorno right here with a sack fly to center Ivy Winter is going to take advantage of a Collinsville throwing air and score from second Quincy High School with a 1-0 lead and they would just continue to grow that margin from start to finish in this contest how about Kendall Byquist right here with a two RBI single through the right side to stake Quincy High School to a 3-0 lead. We're not done. Bottom of the third. This was big. Kate Metemeyer just continuing amassing momentum in this one with a two-out, two-RBI single straight up the middle. Quincy High now up 6-0. Then Avery Lubeck rips a triple over the center fielder's head to play two more runs. Carly Gilker with the shutout. The Blue Devils are victorious today, 11-0 in five innings. Up next for them, a showdown on Friday for a regional title with Belleville East. Also on the scoreboard today in softball, what a comeback by Pleasant Hill as the Lady Wolves rally to beat Havana 5-4, to four, your final in this one. A big triple in this game for McKenna Winchell in this one. Miss Hunt also delivers the go-ahead run as it would be Pleasant Hill getting a defensive gem from Caitlin Barman, a throw at the plate to end it to take down what would have been the tying run for Havana. Pleasant Hill advances on to take on Illini Bluffs for the sectional championship coming up on Friday. All right, Quincy Notre Dame taking on Olympia. Sectional semifinal today. The Lady Raiders down two to nothing in this one in the bottom of the third. Bases loaded, no outs. Peyton Stapaski singles to right field to bring in two and we're all tied up. And then in the bottom of the fourth, one out, one on. And it is of course, rookie time. Brooke Bodden gets the single to center, and that would score Alyssa Lee. It's 3-2 Q&D. Olympia would retake the lead in the bottom of the six with two runs, but here comes Morgan Sanger with a three-run jack. Q&D leads 6-4. Unfortunately for the Raiders, that would be as good as it gets. Stanford Olympia clutch in this one as they deliver five unanswered runs, four of them with two outs, and end Quincy Notre Dame season 9-6 was your final there. Let's do some soccer. Quincy Notre Dame trying to move past and into the super sectional, take Taking on a really good Sacred Heart Griffin team today. Q&D looking in this one for some support. And yes, they're down. But Sage Stratton's going to find Michaela Patton there for a goal to cut the lead at the half at least to 3-1, to one, unfortunately, for there. Quincy Notre Dame could mount no offense in the second half as the Lady Raiders are felled today. They get the loss in this one by the final count of 5-1. to one. Great season for the Lady Raiders, but it has all come crashing to a halt at this point. Other soccer tonight, the Southeast Iowa portion of the soccer slate is over as well. A game effort tonight at Bracewell Stadium for Fort Madison, but they fall to Washington 2-1 to one your final. Hadley Wolf with the only goal in the season finale for the Bloodhounds and Central Lee runs into a buzzsaw in the number one ranked team in the state. Davenport Assumption loses that one. 8 to nothing was your final. Let's do some baseball today. We've got sectional semifinal action from the Unity sectional. Early on in this one, Jace Lotteman right there gives route some wings. Red Bull gives you wings in this one. They're not facing Joshua Vaughn, the outstanding ace of aces for IB, so runs were plentiful, or at least they were trying to be. Dalton Brown hits into the fielder's choice, makes it a 1-0 game. Bottom of the second, though, Toby Cooper going to tie this thing up with a solo blast in this one, and yeah, that's a really good piece of hitting that made it 1-1, but from that point forward, Conrad Charpentier really going to lock down. He's about as good as they get pitching-wise in the state of Illinois, and you will see why right here, just now Nasty stuff for the strikeout from that point on. Didn't allow another run the rest of the game. More to come in this one. Top of the third. Brady Turner with the RBI single going the other way with it. Makes it 2-1 to one Rockets at this point. Bottom of the fourth. Really strange moment. The Rockets are up. The Tigers are trying to tie it. Conrad Charpentier appears to pick off the runner going from second. Check out the runner, though. He's going to bat this ball away. You see it physically. The officials initially didn't see it. 
Nolan Turner's yelling, hey, he batted the ball. He throws the ball away. Initially, the uh, allowed the run. Doug Ellidge, though, wisely got the call right, and it's still 2-1 to one as they take the run off the boards, and then Routes not happy about it. Ten unanswered runs in the fifth starts with Isaac Long with an RBI single. Oh, but we're not done. More to come in this one. Your next big hitter, Eli Olson, who had himself a heck of a frame today, gets one over to the right side. That would be an RBI rip. Nolan Turner, who comes up here in a second, will do some nice work as well. He's going to break the Chris Stewart jinx at some point in this one. Yeah, there he is right there, doing some nice work with the bat right here to uh, drive one the other direction. He never hits well when I'm in the building. He hit well today. More to come in this one. Bryson Mossman going to deliver, deliver again, as I mentioned, 10 runs in the frame. And, man, Route Catholic ro looked really good in dispatching Illini Bluffs today, doing it to the count of a 12-1 to victory in this one. And they will advance on to take on the winner of the Delavan West Central game, which we have highlights from from early in the day. And give West Central credit. Very short-handed, very injury-riddled right now. But, man, the Cougars would take a big swing at Delavan as we take you to those highlights. And it started with an excellent pitching effort on the bump from Cam Seavers, who for the first three innings of this game just absolutely had Delavan looking like they could not hit anything he would throw. Bottom of the fourth, though, Colt Miller seeing a single is the high point of a four-run inning for Delavan. Most of that gimmicky stuff Tell you what, could have been worse than that. In the bottom of the fifth, Caden Meyer is going to make an outstanding play at third base to cut down a run. Ultimately, Delavan builds a 6 to nothing lead. They had a no-hitter going into the top of the seventh. But you know what? West Central scared up four runs, had the game go-ahead run at the plate, but just couldn't get it home. West Central is done. They lose to Delavan 6-4. to Good showdown on Saturday at Unity between Delavan and West Central looming. Elsewhere in baseball today, Illini West is victorious and still alive. What an effort they did to put and take down Rockridge tonight. 11-2, to your final in that contest. Carter Chapin doing great work at the top of the lineup. Had four ribbies today to lead his team to victory. And that victory coming up on Saturday means a showdown with Peoria and Notre Dame. We'll have coverage of that one for you on overtime on Saturday. Looking forward to that as well. Also today, regular season softball in Southeast Iowa. We have reached that point of the season, believe it or not. Central League jumps all over Mount Pleasant tonight. 14-4 to was your final. Finally, some basketball news to pass along tonight with his collegiate eligibility. Now expired, Western Illinois rim runner Drew Cisse is hoping to take the biggest jump of his basketball career. The 6'11 Leatherneck Center declared today for the NBA draft. Cisse was a rebounding menace this past winter, ranking second among Division I players behind Purdue's Zach Eady in offensive rebounds per game at 4.33. Cisse was sixth in rebounds per game. That's 11 for him. And seventh in the country among all D1 players with 363 total rebounds. We've got plenty more playoff action coming your way with Blue Devil Baseball coming up here tomorrow and a big Friday obviously with state track and field, softball with the Pleasant Hill showdown, lots of good stuff coming your way in the next couple of days all right here. Playoff fever is upon us. We can't wait for more.